I hosted a Africa and Europe event for takes of a thousand subscribers and suggested by Austin H to help set up my start. If you want to enjoy events like this in general for milestones or just any random event I host, join my Discord server down below and enjoy. So starting off, everybody just started working on their economy like the usual event start, and we started to work on the military, make it stronger, all that things. What did surprise me though that is a lot of players started to join this event, but I didn't really never had this many players, like five, I had five to six players in the event, and this really surprised me that people wanted to join it. As I was working on my economy, I got most abilities, so that was very good. As we was going, I started working on Navy and also on military, mainly consisting of infantry and 1k tank. Best military leader got this whole game was a 7 attack leader, so that was also really good. When I sit down troops to Astani, I was either going to attack Astani and try to steamroll them, or attack Ghana from the south and try to cripple them if we attack from the north. Now I declared war, our plan was to attack Ghana first since he was the weakest out of them all, and then steamroll his capital that he changed twice. The Astani troops almost got my navy, but thank the lord that I had battleships on it, or I would have lost, because mainly he only had destroyers. We decided to attack Ghana from the north after we crippled his navy and he had a million stacked troops that he didn't use for some reason so that was weird. I decided to retreat from Astani and attack Ghana because we was already winning in the north and during us Germany or Star was winning in Algeria so we had a complete steamroll. <laughs> This is the point of the war where the war turned defensive instead of offensive, mainly because we had to defend Turkey from Egypt after he got steamrolled completely and lost his capital. And basically all my troops died, I found some troops to set it in this capital for just defensive, and I lost there too. And in Egypt, it was worse because I tried to take care of and he was just basically spawning troops, so I lost the 3 million troops right there. I should have probably just uh, deleted them, but hey, I lost them anyways to scorch his capital. Since Astani was gone, we all decided to just do a 360 counter attack where basically almost every country joined in. I was basically in the north because I only had a few troops left. And Egypt also started to spam, so I just lost my Egyptian territory again. I some troops to go help Turkey and Egypt so he can get his land back and I also get some Egyptian land so I can attack the East African Federation. Since Turkey started to kill off the Egyptian troops, we decided to just do a full counter attack against that. I still the Ghana Empire was trying to attack Germany, so he just stayed put. We all started to attack Egypt, even Germany and Italy got onto it, so Egypt was basically done for. As we were attacking Egypt, the Gaza Empire joined in for some reason, so we just decimated his troops. This is where more and more major battles started to happen, where we had to start attacking the southern countries, which were the more stronger ones. This is also a time where players started to leave since the war was going on for three hours. But this is what surprised me. Spain managed to get to DRC and Germany managed to get to South Africa. I think South Africa because South Africa wasn't even a player. Spain, I don't know what his skills was, but he was finally useful in this whole game. I managed to get into EAF and I wanted to start attacking from the inside and out. I also have higher war exhaustion now. But somehow I didn't get the Zerters once, so that was very surprising for me. Italy helped 
looking for joint attack, and I started to attack too, but sadly, we lost naval superiority after EAF sent the navy up, and then we had less naval power. As you can see, EAF started to send all his troops he had stationed in South Sudan and Northern Ethiopia to us so we could slow down just a little bit. Which did work, but also did not work since I still had troops stationed there. As the end of war was coming, we all started to just calm down a little bit, but also start taking land faster since we're about to decide who won. And I still had troops in mainland Ethiopia even after he steamrolled me. So that's the only reason how I'm still Also, Italy landed in Ethiopia, so we we could do a counter strike there. Uh, and also you can see countries started to declare independence like Egypt and Sudan. As you can see here, me and Germany decided to do a counter strike on the Gaza fleet and it ended up working out pretty fine even with my troops being brand new since I was on required military service. As the death round began, we had no rules set in place, so as you can see here, EAF had a bunch of troops and then stationed them in one place for some reason and more people started to get aircraft carriers and things like that. As you can see, now the war calmed down, no one's really fighting anymore as we're just side winners and things like that. At the end, we just all decided to do white peace with the Europe being in the victory as we took the most land, mainly being in West Africa. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and share this with your friends and family. Also, if you want to enjoy events like this, join my Discord server down below and have a good day.